Welcome to the Astro Dude channel. Um, in my last video, we talked about making flats, um, and we we're using SharpCap Pro 3.1. This installment, we're going to work inside Sequence Generator Pro, and we're going to try to accomplish the same thing. We're just going to use a different software. So, for those who didn't sh see part one of SharpCap's flats making video, uh, what all I did was in part one was I showed you my telescope and using the hypercam from Altair Astro. Also my drafting board, tracing panel from Amazon for 20 bucks with a clear acrylic or white transparent diffuser, which I double sticky tape. And I went ahead, I turned it on so you could see how it glows nice and even illumination here's me putting the t-shirt on a couple of elastic bands make sure there's no uh, pleats in the material so all completely tightly stretched so the light will be diffused evenly as you make your flats you don't want gradients so here it is again nice and level different angles you can see from the bottom up point to the ceiling and here friend of mine lent me his image uh, and you can see the 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 dust that collects over days weeks months years of having a CCD and this is completely normal I mean this is normal there are sometimes 50 60 moats dust bunnies some of them are actually on the little glass in front of the CCD or your CMOS camera or your DSLR some are on the focal reducer and others are on the field flattener and if you're using lrgb then they're on every filter l r g b hydrogen alpha o3 and sulfur a lot of work how can we get rid of all these and the vignette on the outer edge we do it by creating some flats using a constant illuminated light source like this tracing tablet which you can find on amazon uh, okay, and I believe that's the last frame. Yes, so let's get started this time. Let's use Sequence Generator Pro. Every time I open Sequence Generator Pro, I, I literally close this window. This is just the opening window, so I'm just going to close it. And what I do, I go to File, Open New Sequence with Profile. Um, the data in the last sequence, do you, wanna, do you want to save it? No. So here's my profiles of my different little telescopes and my different cameras. So in this case right now, it's the VRC6 with the 183 Hypercam um, camera. Okay, so now we have our window prepared. We're, need, we're going to have to put it our flats that we're going to create right now, we have to put them in the directory. So we could start with that right now. You don't want to leave that blank. So I already have one called here, Altair Astro Flats. And um, maybe I can rename that. Just rename that. Go. Oh, just flats for now. <clears throat> um, let's say test. Enter. Make sure it's selected. Say OK. And here it is. Now step one. Go to your camera. Click on Altair Astro Ascom driver and open it up. Hopefully it's connected, which mine is. So it's the mono, the C, the color one's on the other, on the other telescope. Mono, 12-bit. Take your black level and put it at zero. And take your gain and set it at its lowest point. In this case, one. And the fan should be running. Since you imaged last night and you did some deep sky objects and this morning you want to do flats to correct those from let's say your M51 so no gain no offset okay let's see if we can fire that up and see if it connects looks good so let's just bring this down a bit now for you SGP users you're familiar with frame and focus so binning one by one don't change it to two by two just do one second and take one snapshot to see if it'll come up here in the window a second should be bright white and let's give it a stretch lock range one second 
high stretch. Oh, I'll get this yet. I'll get this yet. That's better. For some reason, when I went auto stretch, when I right click here and you select high, maybe I selected none, but let's try it again high. Uh, otherwise, I had to do it manually. Yeah, see, it makes it dark. Um, <clears throat> in any event, let's do this again. Bring this back up. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's just bring that back just so you can see that uh, I'm, I am getting light from the uh, drafting board, the drafting table. So, what are we looking at? Well, here we have the maximum of the uh, camera's um, ADU, which is 4094. And this image, it, it re registered 4092. Okay, so that's too bright. Remember the rule of the last video, 50% histogram? That's what we're aiming for. So here's the interesting thing about Sequence Generator Pro is there's a tool and you can use a flat calibration wizard. Let's see if we can go through this together and make it work. Step one, choose a profile. Let's do that. So let's scroll down, VRC6, 183C, even though it's an M, it's the same. Uh, if you continue, we're going to lose what's in the background. That's fine. Not a problem. That's what we want. Okay. Step two, select mode, bin one by one. Done. Step three, choose the amount of light you would want your flats to be. In our case, because if we see down here, 4,094 is the maximum, or that's 100%. We want 50%. Half of 40, 94 is about 2050-ish. I would like to go no more than 100 ADU below 2550 and only 100 above. So plus or minus. So 1950 or 2150 would be very good, which would put me in the 49 to 51% range. Now the maximum amount of seconds. No more than one second. And how slow or how much darker? Let's start with O2. It's just a test. Now let's see. When I hit start, the camera will take pictures. SGP will ask for images and it'll vary the time between O2 and one second to reach 2050. Let's start, go. First attempt, 04. ADU, 259, way too dark. Second attempt. 032, so 320 milliseconds, which yielded 2085. We asked for 2050. This is a very good number. So we need to save this or write down on a piece of paper. Sometimes it doesn't auto populate. So write down 0 0.32 milliseconds. Write it down somewhere so you don't forget because we're going to save this now. And see the message, the flight flats calibration data successfully saved to profile, <clears throat> 183 color. Okay, now we can close this little window because the aperture is good, the exposure was good. And let's just lower our little window here. Let's have a look at our flats. Very, very well exposed, huge vignette and one large donut or dust mode. Let's see if we can make this a little smaller. Ah, this is the smallest it can go, 19%. Okay. Uh, let's go a little larger then, and I'll zoom in to a corner. Zoom into a corner. I, I don't have to do this, but I wanted to show you. Huge vignette from my focal reducer, and there's one dust bunny. Excellent. So back to full screen. Bring this back up. And notice what's going to happen here. Oh, we lost our directory. Let's go back and input our directory. So flats test. Okay. Camera's still connected. And let's change our target name because now our target just became flats underscore 0 0.32 milliseconds. And do not click on slew. Do not click on center on, please. All right. Under type, 
which is event number one, which is checked for run, go down to flat. There's no filter because it's a color filter. Uh, it's a color camera, the 183C Hypercam or the mono, but there's no filter. We're doing flats. For this one, it's just flats without filters. It's a, a Hypercam. It auto populated 032 because it saved it on a log file. We are bidding one by one and we would like to have 30. So 30 times 320 milliseconds. Now what I like to do is put three seconds here, delay between frames because a 40 meg file being transferred at high speed, this is like milliseconds. And this is a huge, powerful 20 megapixel camera creating 40 mega, megabyte files. So give it a few seconds in between transfer frames. So we're, we're ready to start. Let's see if run sequence will give us our 30 frames and put them in this directory on the desktop. Ready? Let's go. And we're downloading. Hopefully it won't freeze. Delaying for three seconds. One done. And if you, uh, let me bring up the large display because I love my big display. Okay, here we go. So we have two of 30. And I'm gonna pause the video for uh, a minute or two until we hit 28 of 30, and I'll be right back. Here we go. So we're almost done. 28. One more. <clears throat> sequence is complete. There, there's, there is no run end of sequence. Close that. Close this. And if we look at on the left, our histogram shows a 50% peak, which is what we wanted between 19 and 23. Over here on image statistics, the mean value 2106, which is about 50% of 4,094. So we uh, put them on the desktop under a AC, Altair Astro uh, Color Camera Flats Test. So here's the folder right here. Let's go inside. And there are flats, 32 milliseconds, or sorry, 320 milliseconds. Um, and they're bid one by one, and it's a hyper frame one, all the way down to frame 30. There's the last one. You have now completed the creation of flats with your camera, your filter, or your focal reducer field flattener and the telescope all as it was last night nothing changed you just pointed it up you put your drafting board on there with a the t-shirt we found the wizard helped us to find the 320 milliseconds and we chose flats 30 of them now it's a matter of bringing them into your favorite stacking program calibration whether Deep Sky Stacker, Nebulosity, or PixInsight, and see if they worked. Having said that, if they don't work, and you found out that you can still see a light gray vignette on the outer edge, it's probably not black by now, it may be a light, light gray, and it's not completely gone, or it's undercorrected, but if it was overcorrected, and this dark circle on the outer edge, red edge ended up being a bright white then it's overcorrected, and that's because the mean value was either too high or too low and 50 percent in your case and it has happened in my case that it just did not work i had to try 45 percent and then try 55 percent or 10 percent in each direction it's up to you to experiment to see if you can get the right exposure to show up the right amount of light, 50% histogram or half the ADU, and it should work. It always uh, seems to work for me lately. I struggled with this last year for six months, and I did not know why. I followed everybody's tutorial online. I followed uh, some uh, Sequence Generator Pro tutorials. Uh, oh, Backyard EOS, when I had my DSLR for umpteen years, I had uh, five, six different cameras. I tried it, it failed. 
I kept trying, it kept failing. I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I was following the tutorials. It said 50% histogram. And I found out that it was just a little thing like the, the proper exposure time. Oh, and the light. You have to have a good um, source of light like these like these light boxes, of course, this is homemade, the one that I'm looking at right now. Um, because without that, without that, you're going to be you're going to be fighting uh, you're going to be fighting the the correct exposure. When you do sky flats in the morning and the sun's coming up, and sequence generator just took two and a half three minutes to do 30 frames. By now the sun is so high, all my flats were ruined because they were gradient. They went from 50%. Then all of a sudden, a few seconds later, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. First thing you know, they were so bright, they were useless. Um, I just want to stick with my point, and I'm showing you what works. And I showed you how Sequence Generator Pro, you can use the wizard to create flats that will divide out when you calibrate in your favorite program using this little light source and using the software um, from Sequence Generator Pro. That's it. That's all I have to say for this. Please try it out. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends. Please click on the little bell to receive more updates as I continue to make videos in the following weeks on different topics having to do with astrophotography um, and results. Again, I mentioned in my other videos I would like to do some polar alignment using sharp cap and a finder scope and the GP cam from Altair Astro. Lots of fun things to do. A lot of things that people have asked me to do. Can you do a video on this specific thing? Sure, I'll try. Uh, we're all beginners. I'm a beginner. Even if I've been at this since 1979, 1980, we're all beginners. So please um, enjoy this and uh, run it through four or five times. If you have any questions or comments or even criticism, say, you know, I didn't like that. That's, you didn't do it right. That's fine. I want to hear it. Thank you. So. It was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, please subscribe down below and uh, let, let everyone know who's using Sequence Generator Pro that they have some kind of uh, uh, tutorial that they can use for using the Flats Wizard. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care. Bye for now.